I can't believe I did that again. Well, after a while, you're going to start believing what happened. Yes. <laughs> You've changed my world. Well, you changed it. We focused upon it and you caught up. Thank you. So that's how it works. People say, oh, Abraham, I've been following you. And we say, uh, uh, we're following you. We're following you. <laughs> You're launching the rockets we're following the rockets and then we stand there where you pointed us to be and we hold the light for you to find and when you do acknowledge that that's what happened I created this I lined up with this I'm living this thank you so much for that because I'm getting good at this yeah <laughs> Yeah. And when things don't happen the way I expect them, I start to say, wait a minute. They always happen the way you expect them. Mm -hmm. When I discover that my expectation is out of whack, mm -hmm. I'm starting to notice it. When I let life train me into expectation that is bogus, I'm starting to notice that. Let's use expectation in the real way. I get what I expect. It's never other than that. I expected to get called up here today. Yeah, obviously. It's easier for you the second, third, and fourth time. The audience hates you for it because, <laughs> because it feels like injustice. So when positive things happen, which induce positive expectation, that's why things, the better they get, the better they get, the better they get, the better they get. It's also why the worse they get, the worse they get, the worse they get, the worse they get. So what we're asking you to do is to expect outside of what's happening. It's easy to get called on and then expect it again. The hard thing is to not ever have been called on and then get called on. The hard thing to do is to expect around the reality that has your attention. And that's what we talk about all day, every day, isn't it? Find a way to care so much about the way you feel that you're not willing to think a thought that doesn't feel good, even if it makes the most sense. I've never had any money. Nobody I know has ever had any money. My family's never had any money. Therefore, I don't expect to have any money. Well, that's not helpful. That's not helpful. It's going to turn out the way you expect it to be. So you've been taking this in. Of course. So what is it you want to talk about here and now? What's new for you? I want to get better at the fine tuning of my desire and my expectation and all of that. I... I have started to realize that I can manifest things almost instantaneously with just giving it a passing thought. Oh, I'd like to have that. On things that you haven't practiced otherwise. If it's a new thing that you don't have an expectation about, the universe will deliver it to you nearly immediately because there's no push and pull going on in you. But if it's something that you've wanted for a while, so you've got some expectations that are pushing it away while your words are trying to pull it to you, that's what you want to be aware of. And your emotions are what tells you about that. So here's our encouragement. Stay off those subjects. Don't try to teach yourself on the subjects that are difficult. Teach yourself on the subjects that are not difficult, which means choose new subjects. Choose new subjects. Universe, today I would like to see evidence of happy people universe today I would like to see evidence that you know what I've been thinking about universe today I would like to see obvious motion forward for me on something where I haven't been moving forward on before universe today show me progress about something now you see the way the question is pointed it's so vague you're not blocking it you're general enough that you're not blocking it. But when the universe shows you this and 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 this, you'll remember. In other words, the way your expectations change is when you ask for something that you really don't quite believe, but your ask is clear enough and you're not believing is foggy enough that the universe can give it to you. That's how you bridge your expectations. And after a little while, you'll begin to feel invincible absolutely invincible you can change the weather you can rendezvous with everything that you want there's nothing outside of your ability to modify it in the direction of your desire I have to tell you that my whole life particularly when I was a, when I was a child I knew that this was a thing I knew that this was a thing when I would see movies like Harry Potter or P, uh, things with magicians or things like that I knew that there was something to that I knew that there was something to, I can create from my mind. 
And people would say, that's ridiculous. So what are you doing? Why aren't you calling that person? Why aren't you putting more action in that? I knew somehow that sometimes that that would be counterproductive. I knew that I could create a situation through my focus in my mind. And so I'm so grateful to finally have manifested you into my life to show me that that is in fact true. I had given up on a lot of things coming in my life. And by the way, I'm an actor too. It seems to be a theme today. Um, <laughs> But that was such a huge thing for me that there was a block there. And I have to say, since I found you last year, things have really started to change, particularly in the last six months. I now ex <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have begun to expect my dreams to come true again. I wanted them so bad. But I realized that wanting them so bad almost made them out of reach. So now when I think about my desire to get a role or be on a show or whatever, I try to, and you'll tell me if this is correct or not, I try to bring that down to something that is closer to something that I manifest like that. I said, oh, of course I'd be calling for that. Of course I could get a part on that show. Of course I'm a good candidate for that movie. And that actually has started the gate to open where people are calling me in. When my agent tells me about a project, I, I will say to myself, and I don't say it to him, I'm gonna get called in on that. I'm gonna get called in on that. And I follow the impulses that come to me when I'm feeling good. So everything that you said here, really good. There's one tiny little bit of fine tuning that we want to give you. Okay. And everyone's right here close with you. And so they're gonna benefit from this too. When you caught your breath there for a moment, it was the indication that you had stronger desire than you did belief just for a moment. Mm -hmm. And that's why it felt the way that it did. It amplified desire. And then the words that followed that experience where you kind of choked up for a moment were, I've wanted this so bad for so long. We just want to point something out that we pointed out about Esther's experience earlier. You're really gonna like this <laughs> you're still doing and so many people do it you're wanting to influence or evoke from the universe from the emotion of painful need than from joyful desire and it worked with your mother <laughs> if you need a little oh man she's gonna be right there humans sort of train you that way to be just needy enough but there's a power that's greater than that that you want to practice you want to come from love not need from love not need from love not pain from knowing not guessing from knowing not hoping you're at the place and it's a good place to be it's paying off really well for you and it will continue to do so but you could do better where your desire is mostly being met with hope and so that gives you quite a bit of what you desire but when your desire is met with knowing when your desire is met with love when you're not trying to motivate normal people but instead are only dealing with your own push-pull vibration you see it's when you think you're going to inspire another Esther was doing that with her contractor if he just understands that they are putting me in an inconvenient position and that I'm really too busy for this maybe they'll hustle a little bit more and they'll get some stuff done nope it slowed it down not because they wanted to slow it down they weren't deliberately punishing her the universe is not deliberately or indeliberately punishing her it's that you can't get there from there so it's from your pure desire and expectation that it be satisfied but you see you don't want to appear to be that arrogant because when you're sure of yourself lots of other humans who aren't sure of themselves are offended by your sureness that's why when you hear the stories from the actors they are so ready to tell you about their struggle because they want you to give them permission to have received the benefit if their struggle if i can present my struggle to you in an efficient enough way you won't be mad at me for this now success and a lot of you are doing that in a lot of ways because you're humaning and because you're banking upon what other humans are doing because they seem like they're the ones that are casting and calling and it feels like they hold all the cards but they don't hold any cards you hold all the cards in your calling and refusing in your push-pull you hold all the cards and you just caught yourself in that little holding something back that you really wanted 
It was like wanting to evoke just a tiny little bit of sympathy from the universe who will then shine a light on you more kindly. You kind of get what we're talking about when the universe can't change the kindliness of the light that is shining because it couldn't be a more kindly light. The universe couldn't want more for you or believe more in you your inner being which is what you're wanting to sync up with think of your inner being as your true agent as your true employer as your true holder of all the cards and all the goodies your inner being holds it all and know you've got the part you've got the part it's a slam dunk it's a done deal your inner being says yes 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 so who is it that you're pleading with those who hold no power and in pleading with those who hold no power, you hold yourself in an expectation where you don't let in the power that your inner being's already laid out for you. It's the best we've ever said that. I get that. And that, what you saw a few minutes ago, is from me practicing that. You know, the more I would feel about something, I felt like the closer I was bringing it to me. But because of your teaching, it's like what I was talking about earlier, trying to bring that down to where it feels like the next logical Jerry said, step. and this is wisdom, put your basket out there far enough that when you hit it, you're thrilled by it, but not so far you don't believe it. So that's some of what you're talking about. Yeah. But and I, ha I have to let go of that feeling being a feeling of creation, because that's not the feeling of what creation. What do you mean? That feeling of like, we're almost about to cry. You get emotional. I want this so much. You know, it's got a lot of resistance in well, it. Well, there's like nothing you were wrong with it because it does indicate the power of your desire. Okay. But it also indicates the power of your resistance. When you're demonstrating the power of your desire with no resistance, you're just obnoxious. You're just sure of yourself and you're just worried about nothing. And you're just anticipating wonderful things and you're walking around just waiting for the next thing to reveal itself to you and you're ready for the revelation and you're eager every day Esther used to wonder because we said so often the universe will surprise and delight you and she thought how can that be I can get how the universe can delight me but why would it be a surprise if I create my own reality and if I put each and everything in my vortex then why am I going to be surprised and we say the timing of it is what surprises you the timing and the combining of the things that you want the things that you put into the vortex have been spun into this magnificent combining and when you hold yourself as you are beginning to do steadily in that place of positive expectation then there's just delight after delight after delight after delight and so when someone meets you you don't seem like an actor who is yearning for the job you appear to them to be the actor that knows that he's got the job do you know why so many of the big projects cast the same actors because once they've been cast they expect to be cast so it seems like they only pick from them or they mostly pick from them but it's a vibrational thing it's not like that it's a vibrational thing of course it's easier to expect it when it's happened to you we started this conversation with those words but you can by understanding the laws of the universe and by demonstrating to yourself all day every day that you hold all the cards you can then be that person who just expects things to go the way you want them to Esther wants to say to her contractor and to the guy that's doing the gas pipe and to everybody else that's involved in any project that has anything to do with her things always work out for me so we're gonna have a lot of fun together things always work out really well for me and I bet they work out really well for you too and want to be fun for things to work out for the two of us while we're involved with each other isn't that a nice way to be things always work out for me which means I always star in successful movies things always work out for me which means I always join really good teams things always work out for me things go really good for me I have vibrational winningness going on is really what you're saying and people want to hook up with that that's why confidence is attractive to others that's why coattails are a thing when you're sure of yourself everybody wants in on it and when you're timid if you're going, nah, people think anybody else more sure of themselves <laughs> hey doctor I'd like you to remove this whatever it is that I don't want in my body um, um, I might move on to someone more confident good enough yes really good thank you so much